Hello everybody and welcome! The European Space Agency has published an update on their astronaut selection program. 22,523 people have applied in June 2021, including yours truly. Now we know how many have passed the initial screening and have advanced to the next stage called Phase 2-1. More on that later. The number of these candidates is 1,365. Yours truly not included. By the way, I made a video about the application process and the decision ESA sent me, so you can watch that by clicking the link on the top right or in the description below. So what can we learn from the data ESA has published in their update? Well, first off, the overall passing rate. Only a little more than 6% of all applicants have passed the initial screening phase. Which sounds like not a lot until you remember that ESA will only pick 4 people out of all the 22,523 to actually become full-time astronauts. That's a passing rate of not even 0.02%. So expect to see the number of 1,365 to drop significantly over the next couple of months until the process will be finished in autumn 2022. There will also be the first astronaut with a disability selected, a program for which 257 people have applied and 27 have advanced to the next round. If we look a little bit deeper into the numbers, we can see that the biggest share of applications are from France, followed by Germany, the UK, Italy and Spain. Which is unsurprising, since those are the countries with the largest population out of all the ESA member states. But if we look at the applications per population, the numbers shift. Interestingly, France still remains on top with over a hundred applications per million inhabitants, followed by Luxembourg, Belgium, Switzerland and Norway. Okay, but how successful are each of these nations? Again, the absolute number is not really a good indicator due to the unfair population advantage, but if we again order the data by population, we can see that Luxembourg comes out on top, and pretty significantly as well, followed by France, Latvia, Ireland and Belgium. The data provided also shows us the split between male and female applicants. And here we can see an interesting picture across the board. If you are a woman and have applied to become an ESA astronaut, your chances of having been selected for the next round are a lot higher than those for men. Almost 10% of all female applicants have advanced to phase 2-1, while less than 5% of male applicants have done so. Before you start crying unfair or evil feminists running ESA, keep a few things in mind. More than 80% of all the people that ever traveled to space so far were men. And only 1 in 5 people working in the space industry are women. It is feasible that the female applicants were more serious about the thing than some of their male counterparts, who may have been a bit too overconfident in their aspirations. Um, I mean, look at me, I also applied and there are far more qualified people than me that have been rejected. By the way, the country with the most share of male applicants was Switzerland, followed by Norway, the Czech Republic, Sweden and Luxembourg. Out of those, only Luxembourg is in the top 5 countries based on successful share of male applicants, together with Slovenia, Denmark, Greece and Estonia. The countries with the highest share of female applicants overall were Estonia, the Netherlands, the UK, Ireland and Germany. The most successful female applicants based on how many went on to phase 2-1 were Denmark, Latvia, Romania, the Czech Republic and Hungary. So, does this tell us anything about the quality of education, science, engineering or the culture in any of these countries? I would not dare to make any interpretations in that regard based on just these numbers. Also, keep in mind that applying to become an astronaut is a rather special type of undertaking. I am just doing a little statistical exercise here and at total beginner's level at that, nothing more. I mentioned in the beginning that the 1,365 applicants have now advanced to phase 2-1 of the selection process. If you have watched my video about my own application, I went a little through the Astronaut Application Handbook. 
In it, there's a slide dedicated to the different stages of this selection process. Stage 1 was the initial screening, where I and more than 20,000 other people were cut. The more than 1,000 remaining applicants are now entering the stage of initial tests called Stage 2 here, which in itself will have multiple substeps. That's where the 1 in Phase 2-1 comes from. I don't know any details about these tests that will be performed. The handbook only says Cognitive, Technical, Motor Coordination and Personality Tests. Would love to know more about that and maybe I will. Stay subscribed if you're interested. After stage 2, which will weed out a lot of applicants, the next phase will put the remaining astronaut hopefuls in another set of tests as well as individual and group exercises. Only then will they perform medical tests evaluating if they are able to endure a long duration space mission. Then there is an interview and criminal record check. Which makes me wonder why this is done so late in the process, but yeah, sure, Isa, you do you. And then the final decision will be made after an interview with the Director General, a position currently held by Dr. Josef Aschbacher. Who will be the four individuals selected for the astronaut vacancy? And who will be selected for the astronaut reserve, something Isa is doing for the first time in its history? Well, I'll surely keep my eye out for updates on this matter and I will let you know. Keep in mind, one of these people might likely be the first European to fly on a mission to the moon as part of the Artemis program. ESA provides the service module for the Orion capsule and one of the deals made was guaranteed seats for Europeans on rides to the moon. Will that happen by 2024, the goal set by the US administration a while back? I'm not so sure to be honest, but I am sure that we will have new European astronauts come autumn 2022 and that is something to look forward to. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel for more and follow me on my social thingies. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.